and welcome to the Habits and Home Show. I'm your host, Lisa Lazat, and I help busy moms bring order to their homes by downsizing and decluttering and ditching old habits in exchange for systems that bring peace and more enjoyment to their lives. If you're a mom trying to show the love of Jesus to your family, but the clutter in your home keeps you overwhelmed and frustrated, you have come to the right place. On this podcast, you will hear easy step-by-step tips to declutter and create systems so you can keep your home organized and finally walk in the peace God has promised you. Need some accountability? I've got you covered there too. Join the Accountability Club, a community of like-minded mamas decluttering and systemizing our homes together. Are you ready, friend? Let's get started. Hey friends, and welcome to the show. First of all, I want to say hello and welcome to all the listeners who are joining me from the Simple Farmhouse podcast. Last week, Lisa Boss had me on her podcast and a lot of y'all enjoyed what you heard. And now you are binging on all my past episodes and I hope you are getting a lot out of this podcast. So we're going to continue our series of my favorite home management systems. And we're moving on to system number three, which is very personal to me. It's our time management system. Now I have pretty much my entire life been a pretty organized person, you know, like I loved messing up my room when I was a kid just so I could clean it up and reorganize it. But when I became a mom, I took in a lot of clutter, a lot of unnecessary things, and I had to weed it out, filter it out so that I could get some sort of organization, right? We all have our different giftings, right? And organization hasn't really been my struggle, but boy, time management, that's been the thing that has eluded me probably my entire life. I remember in high school being the kid who would wait till the last minute to do her projects. I do my best work in the midnight hour. Now I have gotten a lot better. I am so much better than I used to be. I remember I would spend hours resetting my kitchen. It would make me mad because my family would have moved on. They're relaxing and enjoying their leisure time. And I would just spend hours resetting my kitchen or doing tasks. Why would it take me so long? I really don't think you ever make change in your life, whether it's clutter, whether it's time management, whether it's working out until you get to the place of desperation. Like you're, you get really mad at yourself. Like you're mad at the time that you've wasted. You're mad at the food you've eaten. You are mad at the things you have purchased and wasted money on. You're just mad at yourself, right? I'm giving you permission. I am telling you it is okay in Christian love to be mad at yourself, right? Even God said, be angry and sin not, right? (laughs) So sometimes we got to get angry at things. We got to get mad like a righteous anger. And we have to get mad at ourselves. Like, yes, have the grace. I am not telling you not to have grace, but sometimes grace doesn't always cause us to change. It's almost like our excuse. We can continue to give ourselves grace and grace and grace upon grace. And we never make a change in our life. So I really feel like to get to any point where you feel like you're going to make change in your life, you got to get to a place of desperation, of just righteous anger. <laughs> and that's what I got to. I was so mad at myself for wasting my time when these tasks could really take a lot less time. I think a lot of y'all that I have been starting to coach with, perfectionism comes up. And you overthink and you spend too much time doing something because you want it to be perfect or you are fighting against this perfectionism. Y'all, I'm a recovering perfectionist. (laughs) So I have had to get better at managing my time. It took me a while, y'all. I'm like, I am sharing this with you in like 20 minutes. By no means do I think you're going to be able to get this and start applying it and be great at it. It took me making little tweaks, 
little changes, taking one of these steps, getting really good at it, focusing on it for like a month or two, and then adding the next step in. So I'm going to go through what I now use as my time management system. I have provided this entire system in a cutesy little workbook for you that has some videos that go with it with some downloads and some templates. Y'all, it is the biggest bang for your buck, right? So if you are a visual person and you need hand holding, well, first of all, I do hand holding in my one to one coaching. So if you are someone who needs that, you just need to jump past all the workbooks. You've tried them, you tried the courses, you just can't do it. Then click the link below and schedule a coaching consultation with me because I will hold your hand and work with you through all of these things. Okay. But if you are needing some hand holding and you're you're kind of like a DIY person, then just simply download this workbook. It has some videos to go with it. It's going to walk you through setting up your time management system. Now you do not have to do it like me. I always tell people that you have to take what you can take the good out of this season, you know, whatever is presented to you, whatever God has brought to you, take the good that you can get out of it and apply a little bit of it put the other part of it on the back burner and then circle back around in a couple of months and maybe tweak it or add more to it. Okay. So take what I've shared with you, glean from it and see what you can apply to your life. Okay. So I'm going to just share with you what I do. By no means do I think this is going to solve all your problems. I'm just sharing you, sharing with you how my brain thinks and what I have had to go through in my own life experience to get to the point that I am now where I am showing up on time. I am not spending hours resetting my kitchen at night. I have systems in place. You know, like you're probably just starting out. I am a couple of years ahead of you. Okay. So please do not think that you are, that I want you to jump to where I am right now. Okay. There is a starting point for everyone. All right, speaking of starting point, where do you get started with managing your time and thinking about putting in place a time management system? Well, I personally think that step number one is understanding what your personal fundamental needs are. Okay, why is that the first step? Because you have probably been neglecting yourself. You probably feel burnt out. You probably feel like there's an imbalance in your life. And it's probably because you are not taking care of your personal fundamental needs. We all have needs. Now, these are needs outside of food, water, shelter, love, etc. These are needs that I personally have and that you personally have. So for me, One of my fundamental needs that I discovered is alone time. I need alone time. I am a extroverted introvert. I can talk to anybody. I don't need a stranger, but I need alone time to fill up my cup. Okay. I need time to be quiet and to have an opportunity to think an opportunity to go slow. If I need to another fundamental need that I have is time with my husband. I need, I crave, I long for time, a date night, not just time with him. Like I don't want to sit just beside him on the couch and look at our phones or watch TV. I want to be dated. I want to be romanced. I want to feel like we were kids in high school because we did date in high school. I want to feel that kind of chemistry. Okay. So I need one of my needs is a date night. Okay. In the workbook, I do provide some examples for you if you need that. But if you are just following along and you are a podcast student, just write down your own personal eight fundamental needs. I want to give you the permission and the space and the opportunity to just say what you need. Okay. Write out that list, have it in front of your eyes, get clarity over it. Okay. And if you need more clarity, you can hop in a coaching call with me and I will walk you through this step. Step number two, you need to have a place where you are writing down or recording your family's activities. Okay. For me, I have switched over to a digital shared family calendar. All of my family members have phones in our house. Now, whether you 
your kids have a phone or not, probably you and your spouse have a phone. And so I really recommend in our day and age, I mean, I fought against this for a really, really long time, but I found that it was really difficult to keep track of what was going on with my husband and he was taking care of my sons, my, my, both of my boys activities. And he had that in his head and I knew what was going on with my daughter and all her, her activities. And it was just really difficult for us to keep up with all the coming and goings in our life. And he was really good at using a digital calendar. And so he, he tried to share it with me for years and I, it finally clicked. I finally gave up the idea of like writing it all down in a paper planner because he didn't have access to my paper planner and I didn't have access to his, his digital calendar. So I finally got on board with him and I joined into our family shared calendar and I love it. I absolutely love it. And now as my kids have gotten older and they've gotten their own cell phones, we make it their responsibility to be added to the calendar and they have to keep up with what is going on in the family. If they want to make plans for their the weekend or plans with their friends, they have to look at the family calendar before they come and ask us to see what is going on. My daughter who is 15, she has joined the dance team. She now takes all the events from her football games and her practices, and she puts in the calendar all of those events herself. The same with my 13-year-old son who is involved in baseball. And then my 11-year-old, he will eventually learn how to put events into the family calendar as well. So decide, are you going to stick with your paper planner, which is totally fine. You may, however, have to do multiple planners or multiple calendars. You probably have your personal planner that you take with you, but you'll probably have to transpose those dates onto your wall family calendar, okay? Because you need to be able to share those with your family, okay? So if you are going to do a paper calendar, there are going to be extra steps in the communication, right? Now, if you decide to do a digital calendar, Maybe not everybody has a phone in your house and you may have to transpose those dates up on the family calendar as well. So just really pick the mode or the medium that you want to use, all right, and stick with it. The whole thing about time management is that you have whatever system you put in place, you really need to try it out for at least 90 days to see if it's working for you, okay, before you move on or change it. All right, so step number two is to have a designated spot, whether digitally or physically, where you are recording events and appointments for your family, all right? Number three you are going to write out your ideal perfect day schedule, okay? So if everything went as you planned, what would that look like? And in the workbook, I do ask you questions that will guide you through thinking about your ideal perfect day. Something like, What is your ideal time to wake up in the morning? What is your ideal time for your kids to wake up? Now, why do I say ideal? Because as we know, life doesn't always go as planned, right? We have some variables in there. So I want you to have the opportunity to say, okay, if everything went as mama planned, what would that look like? Get some clarity over how you want to spend your day, okay? And write it out, whether you do it in the workbook that I provided for you or you do it on your own on a piece of paper. Write out your ideal perfect day. Start every day with the ideal time that you're going to wake up and the ideal time that you are going to go to bed, okay? Step number four is to set up your designated daily to-do list. Now, I tell you, in the workbook, if you are going to do a digital family calendar, then it will probably make sense for you to do a digital daily to-do list. And in that workbook and in the course that I provide for you, I do provide you templates that you can simply copy and paste in your notes app or in Evernote if you are on an Android, okay? So I do provide those templates for you. It's really easy. Now, if you are someone who wants to use a physical calendar, I do recommend just getting a spiral notebook and setting up 
your to-do list in that notebook. Do not write your to-do list in random different places. Wherever you keep your personal planner, also have your notebook or your to-do list notebook right behind it. If your planner is set up, which I, I'll provide a link for my favorite planner, in that planner, it does have a place where you can write your daily to-do list in time blocks. So I will pro provide that um, link to that planner below if you're interested in that. But if not, if you already have a planner that you like to use, then and you, and you don't have room to write your daily to-do list, then I do recommend getting a spiral notebook and setting up your format, which I do provide for you the template or what that would look like in the course and in the workbook that um, I'm, I'm talking about today. Okay, so step number four is to set up your daily to-do list. Step number five is to create daily reset routines. Now, this is where some of y'all just, you, you, you wanna get organized, you organize, you declutter, but you're not maintaining it. And this is where the practice comes in. You have to practice. Sometimes when I work with my clients or I have worked with my clients in the past, I would go in and organize their, their home in like six hours or organize a room in six hours. And then when I would come back, it would be disorganized again. And it's because they're not putting into practice daily reset routines. If you have not downloaded my free daily reset checklist, click the link below to grab that. Um, but in the workbook, I do provide an opportunity for you to think through what rooms you need to reset at the end of your day. Okay, so step number five is to create daily reset routines. And it's supposed to be really natural in your home. As you flow from room to room, reset the room before moving on to the next room. Okay, now step number six is the last one. And it is to create a zone cleaning schedule. Now, how I teach zone cleaning is you basically divide your house into four zones and the fifth zone being outside. And you can clean and focus on one zone per week. Now, this doesn't mean that you aren't doing light cleaning throughout the week. We definitely want to wipe down those counters. But this is like the deep cleaning time, okay? So say zone number one is my kitchen in my dining room. I would do that on the first week of the month, probably on Wednesdays because that's my day off from work. And I will deep clean my kitchen and my dining room from top to bottom in on that week. So once a month, each room is getting a deep clean and daily rooms are getting a light clean or a reset, of course. Okay. So once you discover your zones, and you establish them, then you want to put them on your calendar, on your family calendar, whether it is physical or digital, so that it pops up every month What, as a reminder what room or what zone you need to clean. And don't forget, you can also put that on your weekly to-do list template as well, okay? So I hope that wasn't too confusing. It's a lot easier to see it visually if you just grab the workbook and I walk through the workbook with videos as well, okay? So I'm gonna go back over those six time management steps. Write them down. If you wanna do them on your own, that's completely fine, but I do provide the workbook to make it easier for you, okay? So step number one, discover your fundamental needs. Step number two, set up your physical or your digital, which I'm a big fan of, calendar. Step number three is to write out your ideal perfect day schedule. Step number four, set up your daily to-do list and have it in one spot. Don't write it on random pieces of paper. And something that I like to do as a practice is once the week is done, I rip out that page as like a ritual and I throw it away so that I don't have it cluttering up my entire notebook. Step number five is to create daily reset routines. And step number six is to create a zone cleaning schedule. All right, friends, I hope you got a lot out of this episode. And like I said, if you need help setting up your time management system, you can grab the workbook below. It comes with videos, or you can click the link below to join the accountability club, or you can work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Everything is in the show notes below. All right, I will see you right here next time on the Habits and Home Show. Hey friend, before you go, I wanted to tell you more about the Accountability Club. 
Each month, we'll tackle a new space in our homes and work together to declutter and set up systems so we can easily maintain order without getting overwhelmed. You'll get a new decluttering tutorial each month, the coaching and accountability you need to actually follow through, and encouragement without judgment from other Christian moms in a safe environment. And guess what? The entire club is off of social media, so you don't have to worry about distractions the world may throw at you. Sweet friend, if you're feeling stuck in your decluttering journey, this is the place for you. Click the link below to try out the Accountability Club and start decluttering today.